can't be hid. What God sees, that's not something miraculous fixing to happen. We are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth. And he's counting on us to carry out his procedures. Are you in with me? Are you ready for a change? Are you ready to see Jesus? Are you ready to commit your life to the Lord? Now that's what it's going to take. 1 John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God, my little children, and have overcome them. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I like that sign. Prayer. A prayer. That's what it's all about. I'm, I'm going to teach you something, then I'm going to sit down. I got a couple of things to say. Y'all didn't know y'all was coming to church tonight, did you? At a tea party. That's what it's all about. Listen to this. This is key. Matthew 12 and 25 says, We've been to bind the strong man. Uh, uh, and knowing their thoughts, he said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. We are so divided as a nation is why we can't stand. It's time for us to come together. And just a couple of verses down in this, listen to this. Listen to this. In verse 29 it says, Or how can one enter into the house of a strong man and spoil his good? Except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his goods. Listen to this. The strong man is in Washington. But we're finna bind the strong man. And then we're gonna steal his goods. That's what the word says, isn't it? Repeat this after me. In the name of Jesus, we bind the strong man. Lord, give us wisdom and knowledge to take this nation back. In Jesus' name. Now all you have to do is believe it and watch it come to pass. This is it. I got to close. People are looking for God. What the mission of God is in their lives. We're looking for what God wants to do. We're looking for uh, uh, the will of God. What God wants you to do is draw near to him. He wants you to have a, he wants to have a relationship with you. Um, uh, see, if you be united unto him, you're walking around looking for what does God want me to do? I go to this church, this church, this church. I want to go to this rally, this rally. This rally. What does God want me to do? I'm going to tell you what he wants me to do because he told me to tell you tonight. To be united with him. Get closer to him. Stop fleeing from him. Father, I thank you for the words. I thank you for what you've given me in my heart. I thank you for these people. I pray that you give them travel mercies and gates that go back and to and from their destinations. Now have your way in this rally because, Lord, we're going to make this rally about you. This tea party is all about you, Jesus, so have your way. Thank you for Monty Burke. Thank you for his wife. Thank you for all the people that have put this thing together for your glory in Jesus' name. Glory. Praise God, brother. That was awesome. Thank you so have we let you down? No. Praise God. That was awesome. How many of you all have ever been to Washington, D.C.? How many of you have ever visited the Lincoln Memorial? I was there three weeks ago, and I stood there in the Lincoln Memorial reading the words that Abraham Lincoln wrote from his speeches. What? What? Mr. Lincoln. Carry my speeches. Well, that's wrong. Carry my speeches and important papers inside this hat. This this is the original hat that he wore, that I wore. Still wearing the same hat. And like you probably figured out, I never like to never dug out to be here. It's hot enough where I've been for the last. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about the grave. That's all. <laughs> wow, that was almost a slip. I've had uh, Bradley Edge to hold my water. I hope that's not a play on words. <laughs> so, bottom line is he does hold. I do have my speeches, but hopefully this one uh, is going to be memorized. <laughs> now, <clears throat> how many of you know what TEA stands for? TEA, what is that? <laughs> I wonder. TEA. Well, I first, uh, you know, I was invited kind of an afterthought, just like I was invited an afterthought 
to appear at Gettysburg to make a little over four minute speech. The man in front of me made a two hour, two hour speech at Gettysburg. And Gettysburg, speaking of Gettysburg, today is an anniversary. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, the third day of a ferocious, bloody battle in American history, one of the most bloody in Ameri American history. The 3rd of July, that was 146 years ago during my presidency. I'd been president about two years within. This is the middle part of the Civil War. And <clears throat> in terms of the way, way I think, it was seven, seven score and six years ago, the Battle of Gettysburg. And then here came the speech. <clears throat> I'll have to put on my spectacles for this speech because never did learn, memorize this speech. Most, most people say, did you ever memorize that speech? And I say, well, neat, neither did the man in the, in the black suit. He never memorized his speech. I put on my spectacles and started reading November 19, 1863 at the cemetery, dedication of the cemetery to the war dead in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It began something like this. Most of you have heard this speech that I made. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now before we get into the final part of that speech, there's some liberal people out there, there's some obstructionists in our nation. In fact, we had a president made a great speech years ago. Someone wrote a speech for him. He stood up and said, ask not what you shall do for your country now, the liberals and the obstructionists have changed that famous speech. Ask not <coughs> what you can do for your country. Ask what your country can do for you. That's how we stand today. And the obstructionists have also, <coughs> and liberals have changed my wonderful Gettysburg Address to this. Government of the liberals, by the liberals, for the liberals. Well, that is sad. Speaking of sad, it reminds, reminds me of Stephen Arnold Douglas, who uh, was a congressman, a senator actually, from Illinois. He and I had famous debates, and we had, uh, we're, each of us had a railroad car, and we'd go up and down the, going up and down the tracks in Illinois before we had our debates. And uh, of course, the uh, strange thing, the, uh, <coughs> engineer on his train knew all the back routes and they got there a long time. We always had took a way, long way around because he was a Democratic uh, general later and ran against me in 1864, General McClellan. So anyway, it reminds me of my very first political speech. Here it was, 18, 1832, and uh, the speech went something like this. I assume you know who you are. I assume I know, I assume you know who I am. I am Abraham, I am humble Abraham Lincoln. I have been solicited for several friends in this uh, county to run for political office. My political, my political opinions are like, short and sweet, it's like the old woman's dance. If elected, I shall be very thankful and if not, it will be all the same. Well, guess what? It was all, was all the same because I wasn't elected. But within 29 years, I had been elected President of the United States. Now the scripture tells us that Joseph in the Bible taught his senators wisdom. Now that's a good theme for us today to teach our senators, each one from each state, wisdom. And the scripture admonishes us that we should pray for godly leaders and righteous judges for our nation. And as Abraham Lincoln said, 
In conclusion, in ending the Gettysburg Address, these are his words. That this nation, under God, he added under God in the original speech. He added that in his speech. That this, this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. Thank you.